Right then, so we have the last episode of Doctor Who Flux. Let's talk about it. By God, Chris Chibnall knows how to be adventurous. But unfortunately, adventurous doesn't mean great, as yeah, I thought this episode had a lot of problems. Not as bad as last week's, which if you have a look at my review, I really didn't like. I just thought it was just a nothing episode and did nothing as a setup episode. However, one of the reasons why the episode might have really struggled was it really had nothing to set up. Let's focus on the finale. Wow, I was expecting some form of reveal. Now, as you'll have probably guessed, I'm not a massive fan of The Timeless Child um, as, a, as a twist, as a concept. I just think it's lazy and boring. Lazy and boring is probably not the right words, I just think it's an awful twist. But I was expecting some form of reveal, and now we're being strung along by the fob watch being put in the TARDIS, but, oh, we'll do the reveal eventually. And it's a real problem, because it's meaning that we have to continue to deal with the ramifications of this twist, till right up till the end of the Jodie Whittaker run, which we probably were going to have to do anyway. But it's just really boring, especially because I couldn't care less about this twist. That's my issue, is it's stringing us along for reveals that I don't really care about. Let's switch it up, let's um, do some positives and then we can go back on to some of the negatives. In terms of characters, there was some um, nice stuff here. I think, you know, while it's probably poorly handled in previous episode, this episode standalone, Vinder and Belle, um, I think, I swear that's her name, is, is Belle. Uh, Vinder and Belle and all that stuff, um, you know, that was wrapped up really nicely. I kind of feel like those characters have to show up again, or it's a little bit pointless. You know, I feel like they've been set up to do more, and if they never show up again, it would be a bit odd. However, I do genuinely reckon, and maybe at like, maybe in like the 2022 um, Centenary special, I genuinely think it's possible that we might get a big collection of a lot of like the big Jodie Whittaker characters and like coming back in a team up. Because Bradley Walsh was, has been heavily linked to being on set for something Doctor Who being filmed. You've got these characters, John Barrowman could come back, Kate Stewart at the end of here was like, yeah, I could come back. I genuinely reckon that could be a plot line where they could bring back a lot of the Jodie Whisker characters for that centenary special. In terms of other successful moments, Jericho. That death was actually, you know, it was, it was quite impactful. I think it was a little bit forceful why he didn't, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure why he didn't just transport away. Uh, that seemed a little bit forced, but the actual death was, you know, quite emotional for a character that wasn't majorly important, but was likeable enough. For me, this episode, the Sontarans, very mixed bag. Because on the one hand, I love the Sontarans being a bit cheesy. I love them being a mix of, you know, good, good humour with also, you know, just like the, the big tyrannical evil. In the first half of this episode, there were definitely too much of, you know, the silly jokes and, like, not enough of the tyrannical evil. No, I never needed to see a Sontaran give up information because he wants chocolate. However, in the second half, with, I thought, a lot of, like, the Sontaran's plan and all that good stuff, that was really cool. I really enjoyed some of the stuff they did with that. Apart from that, this episode's just a lot of missed opportunities, if I'm honest. Kate Stewart, fun to see her but really does nothing. The Grand Serpent feels really pointless and feels just like he's there as a setup for another thing that's coming. And the whole dynamic with him and Vinder as well, really not explored. Corn Azor, been set up as these massive series villains just to really not do anything all season. And now I think, I think they're, they're, they're done for good. Like what was the point? They were literally just there to monologue and be evil and now they're gone. B brilliant. I also think stylistically, this episode, it was it was hard to follow with all the, with with the split Doctor thing, and it just it 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 didn't work for me. I think that's something that I'm glad they did it in term instead of just giving us a boring episode. But you know, it's better that they tried and for me failed than didn't try anything. It was just a bit. It, it just pulled focus for me. So this kind of echoes what I said last week. I think this episode is better than last week just because ep last week's episode was nothing. But last week I was very much like uh, Doctor Who is pretty much stagnating in mediocrity until Ross T Davies comes back. And I do not want people to think I'm, you know, this massive like, oh, like Jodie Whittaker bad, like Chris Chibnall bad. 
I'm not first, but I've, I've gotten to the point where Chris Chibnall has just sucked the enjoyment out of Doctor Who for me. And I will keep watching. I'll never stop watching because I love the show and I want to find out what happens in this universe. But I've enjoyed not much of Doctor Who Flux and I'm looking forward to a change. If you'd like to see me rank the episodes, that will be up very soon. In terms of I feel like I'm going to be working all night to get two videos out in one day. So please subscribe for that. Apart from that, have fun. I'll see you soon.